but be persistent and consistent with what you're doing and be intentional about your time together. Hi, it's John Bernadovich, your host of the H Like a Boss podcast. Welcome to season three. I've embarked on a journey to get to know amazingly awesome HR and business professionals with the hope of finding what it takes to do HR like a boss. If you like the show, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. On today's show, I am joined by Pete Tram. Pete is the CEO and founder of Latitude, and I was so lucky to meet Pete as I am um, getting more involved in doing speaking engagements. And one of them is at PHRA, which is the Pittsburgh SHRM Association. And Pete flipped this around. He had me on a podcast while getting me prepared for that upcoming presentation. So Pete, welcome to the HR Like a Boss podcast. Thanks, John. Excited to be here. And it's exciting to learn more about your background as we dig into what it means to actually do HR like a boss, live HR like a boss, and act it out. Excited for today. Every first question on the podcast is about the purpose of HR, and I'd love to get your perspective on how you view that. Yeah, so I learned about the purpose of HR uh, when I was taking a class, uh, Agile HR, um, and Beth Davis was the one who actually was my instructor. And I asked and I said, hey, Beth, what what is good HR and what she taught me and I'll share here. The purpose of good HR is to line, align the strengths and interests of an individual, an employee, a person to the needs of the larger organization. And HR does that uh, by, you know, building relationships and understanding who each individual is. John, who are you on a personal level? What gets you fired up? What would you, you you kind of threw my question that I like to ask back at me, right? Uh, What would you do if money wasn't an issue? And how does that align with your, uh, you know, kind of day job, right? What would you do if this job stopped paying you tomorrow? How long would you stay here, right? And figuring out more of these stay interviews, right? This is the purpose of good HR, to really meet people where they are so that the company can get to where it has to go. And I feel like employing engagement starts not only in talent acquisition, but day one through day 30, that first impression that you're making on an employee during their onboarding. How, how do you see organizations improving that so that they increase their chances of, of having an engaged employee? Mm-hmm. So there's an orientation which happens in the first couple hours or day or weeks, uh, but then it goes to an onboarding process. And I think we have to think strategically and act tactically. So whenever I first come into this organization, I need to figure out how am I aligned to the mission, the vision, the values. And we can get this from our boss. We can get this from HR. Typically, we get this from higher up leadership levels. So during this onboarding process, preferably in the first days to weeks, right, don't wait past the end of that first month, this new employee is having conversations with at least five different individuals. And you think about the old way of onboarding somebody, usually an office tour, is always on that list. Well, John, we're not all in the office anymore and we're not all in the office consistently. And so how can I do that office tour and ensure that you know, new employee uh, you know, Dave got the best experience? How did we do on our first, you know, first impression? And that's where that stickiness and belonging you know, really comes from. So ensuring that you're talking to HR, not just once, but, you know, a couple of times throughout that first week, second week, third week. Uh, and part of that's the recruiter. Hey, John, I recruited you to this organization. How do we do? Is it living up to the expectations, right? So in that feedback loop, as well as the manager, right? We want to make sure that we iterate, iterate, iterate. And think of this, you know, opportunity, whether you do it in person or virtually, of doing that tour, making sure that you talk to, you know, your manager, the peers of your manager, you might have a buddy involved as well. And then your split level, I call this a champion, right? Somebody that's at least two levels above you. Maybe it's somebody from the, uh, you know, executive team, but it's really important to see that the leadership inside the organization walks the walk and talks the talk. And, you know, they're so busy, but are they too busy to welcome a new asset to the organization? to welcome a new link in this chain of their success. 
speaking of like the importance of engagement and how we get at driving results, one of the key parts in the book, HR Like a Boss, and that we talked about on this podcast before is HR's influence on managers and coaching managers to be better managers. And I'm curious as to how your technology and your experience is allowing that to improve within your clients. Yeah, so the, the technology is just a way to structure it and make it easier, right? The purpose of this is to educate everybody on what good looks like. And, you know, typically you talk to, to managers, hey, I'm, I'm leading two people, three people, five people, 75 people. You got to be there for your employees. You got to be there for your team. And whenever we have persistent and consistent communications, we can be proactive, right? Whenever these oh, crap moments come up. Most times we're reactive. Oh, sorry, John, I got to push off this week. Oh, I can't talk next week. Oh my gosh, I'm underwater. I'm swamped. I can't do it. And so it's prioritizing our people. And you know, we recommend just a one-on-one -on -one each week. It doesn't have to be 30 or 60 minutes long. It can be as simple as a touch point, you know, 10 minutes. John, how are you doing? What'd you work on last? What's next? What are your blockers? What do you need from me? And what's one thing that you're working to improve on this week? as simple as that, right? How is this aligning to your professional development plan? What's one of the biggest reasons, biggest drivers for people departing companies right now in the great resignation, the turnover tsunami, the quiet quit, all these different things. It's the poor relationship between employee and manager. It's because you don't see that map to professional growth in your current job role. So when managers prioritize their people, and take time to listen, not just check in. Hey, John, I'm just checking in with you. Radio silence, crickets on both sides. Being intentional with those 10 or 20 or 30 minutes each week is what we need to do more of. And it takes time. And the bigger your team is, the longer it'll take. Maybe it's a bi-weekly check-in, but be persistent and consistent with what you're doing and be intentional about your time together. My last question the book is called HR Like a Boss. You're on the HR Like a Boss podcast. How do you describe someone that does HR like a boss? They walk the walk and they talk the talk. HR is an increasingly important space for organizations of all sizes. And there's so much opportunity that we have in order to positively influence the lives of others. And it's one thing to share all the statistics and share all of what could happen. It's another thing to take action. So let's make sure that we're making fact-based decisions and that we're truly meeting people where they are so that the organization and our companies can get to where they need to go. And it can take a lot of you know, long, long, long days, right? But this is a great instance where if we don't have all the expertise internally, we can go to external shops, right? You just talked more about what Willery can do. So it's to know whenever we are able and capable and to know whenever we don't have expertise in certain areas. And that's okay. At the end of the day, we're masters of our own craft. So in order to HR like a boss, you have to walk the walk and talk the talk and always be genuine. Pete, talking about doing your best. That was an awesome show. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you, John. Thank you for listening to the HR Like a Boss podcast. If it resonates with you, please leave a rating or review. Or better yet, subscribe and share with a friend. Until next time, let's continue to aspire to do amazingly awesome HR.